Have you ever experienced something so crippling in your life that has made you feel broken? I have. Are you someone who has a giving heart but is struggling to feel good themselves? Are you consistently putting your needs aside to take care of everyone else? If so, you're not alone. Giving starts with giving to yourself so that you are able to give of yourself to other people. Isn't it time you took back control and discovered what makes you tick? Join me in my journey and find out how you can feel better about yourself, live your best life, and share that with others. Thinking of yourself, it doesn't make you selfish. It makes you brave. I'm Nelia, and this is the Giving Starts With You podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Giving Starts With You podcast. I'm your host, Nelia Hutt. I'm so happy to have you join us again. And thank you for those who have subscribed to the new channel, um, which is the podcast now on YouTube. Today, I'm really excited to have met a new friend. His name is David Sandercott. Welcome to the show, David. How are you? I'm great, Nelia. Thanks for having me. Happy Friday. Yes, yes. And we were just talking. You're from California. Uh, yeah, I'm actually from Detroit, Michigan, oh, okay. but I, I've lived in California for the last 20 years. That's awesome. I have family out in California. I've only been a couple of times, though, but definitely love it there. Yeah, it's a yeah. nice place. <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about David and then I want to dive right in because I am excited about what he's going to teach us today. So David is a best-selling Amazon author that has appeared on ABC and Fox. He has been helping people for over 10 years as a coach in business, spirituality, mindset, healing, weight loss, and much more. David is an expert in helping people and you guys know how much I love that topic, right? Finding the peace and happiness they seek while creating the business they've always wanted. Um, this is one of my favorite topics. So I'm very excited and honored to have David on here with us today. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so David, how did this journey start? Tell us a little bit about who you are and, and you know, what, what got you to the path of um, passion and, and your work that you're doing? Sure. Well, well, let's just start at the beginning. It, you know, I, I've said this so many times before, but it, it was like my life changed the day that I was in college and one of my closest friends looked at me in disgust and said, fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, Dave. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because I thought about it and he was right. That's exactly how I was going through life. And it, 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 it was a dead end. And so I quickly after that changed my life. I lost 33 pounds of fat. I gained 14 pounds of muscle in 14 weeks. And, and from not drinking every night, I realized that wasn't stupid. It was like, oh my God, this thing in my head actually works, you know? And so I figured, well, now I got to figure out how to be successful. And I was fortunate enough, I, I figured I could get a book and read how to do that. You know, my mm. ex-girlfriend always jokes, yeah, anything David needs to learn, he just gets a book. And, yeah. But and, any, anyways, anyways, I, I, I was lucky enough to get the book, Think and Grow Rich, an original unabridged version. And for anybody listening to this, if you can find it in a used bookstore, the older the book, the older the version, the better, because they've watered it down, mm. they've taken out so many important things from it over over the years unfortunately but mm. that book changed my life it told me I can do anything I wanted to do so I said hmm, well I'm going to be the shortest world's shortest high fashion model because that seemed like a lot of fun and I'd get to work out and that's all I really wanted to do was like be an athlete and stuff I'm 5'3 I weigh you know there you know that's it's, it's it, um so anyways, after I made the decision to do that, what it told me was that if I believed in myself, I made a decision and I started meditating, I, I could do anything, you know, that, that's what I took away from it anyways. And so after making that decision to be the world's shortest high fashion model in a little less than three years, I appeared in Vogue magazine alongside supermodel Kate Dillon. And, uh, you know, Ann Wintour, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name, but the editor of Vogue, like even made a comment about me in Time Magazine and like it, Helmut Newton was the photographer. So, I mean, it was a super spectacular honor and, and an incredible thing to happen. And holy moly, did that inspire me <laughs> to want to teach this stuff, you know? 
And I mean, after one reading, I wanted to be a coach of the book. I didn't know what a coach was back then, but I knew I wanted to teach people this stuff because it was like, this is everything that they didn't teach us in school. And if they would have, God, I would have been a great student and it would have been so much more helpful, you know? You and me both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, that's the beginning, I guess. And, and now it took a long time for me to get to a place where I could help people. And, and, it, and, it, and it was, you know, I, it was, we talked a little bit about the show before the show about how before you can, you know, Lucille, Lucille Ball says, before you can get anything done in this world, you have to love yourself. Mm. And I just think that that's so accurate because, you know, you know, people, I've heard people like a cost, like one, just tell me how to be a successful business owner. Just tell me. And it's like, well, you got to believe in yourself. You got to love in yourself. You got to find how you're going to serve people and solve their problems. And then you got to put together systems and go out and do that. And they're like, no, tell me what I need to do. <laughs> and, and the reality is like a real good first step is look in the mirror and say, I love myself. You know, I love me. I love you. I approve of myself. I accept myself. You know, for me, that's where it all started was, you know, I remember I had a, a, a cassette tape of Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. Mm -hmm. I probably listened to that thing a hundred times. And, it, and it, she said, just tell yourself all day, I approve of myself, I approve of myself, I approve of myself. And I've sort of along the years added, I accept myself and I love myself. But I mean, I spent, I can't even tell you how long I've spent saying affirmations like that to myself, because it was really about my self healing and about, and about me needing to become the person I needed to become so I could hold the space to be a coach. So does that make sense? I don't want to get off track no, here. No, sure. I love that. And it... <laughs> You don't teach these things in school, you know, and I think we would all be so much more successful if they could teach a little bit more about life, you know, and all the things. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and not to get off track, but they could teach whatever they wanted to in school. They teach you the junk they teach you on purpose to make sure you're unlikely to love yourself, believe in yourself, mm -hmm. accept of yourself and approve of yourself. That's why it's so important for people like you out there that want, that have a passion and have an inspiration that have healed yourself that, and you want to help people. That's because that's what you're supposed to do. And you need to do whatever it takes. I mean, I've gone through hell and back mm -hmm. to get to where I am today. And it's been worth ev everything. You know, I, I didn't explain that part of the story, but um, maybe I will. So it was like, even though I had this success in the beginning, of, of my, you know, I didn't really start a, prof a professional career until I was 25 years old. I, I moved out to California to pursue acting and modeling and, and work in the film industry. And, and the reality is that lasted five or six years. It, it came to an end. My, my last day of work, I had a $9,000 day rate as a model, just to sort of cap, put a cap on that shortest high fashion model. Right. And again, I'm five, three. <laughs> and, and so after that, though, it was it was like I, I suffered from depression and anxiety for for over a decade, you know, and the depression was debilitating. Mm. It got so bad in 2010. So what happened was I, I you know, I broke my foot in five places. Let, let's back up a little bit. Let, let me tell you, because you're asking me, what inspired me to want to help people. Yeah. And all this. So yeah. I, I had a I, you know, an acting and like I wanted to be a bartender. Because I thought that that would be a really great way. And I, I feel so grateful to have been a bartender. And I affected people in very positive ways. I helped people get sober. I was a sober bartender. So I helped people get sober. Awesome. And I got into an, a, a direct selling company, you know, like network marketing, direct right. sales. And a lot of people have a, a negative attitude about those companies or it's a scam or it's a pyramid scheme. And, and it's like, I think that's one of the best places to start. If you don't know what to do, you're way better off getting involved in something like that mm -hmm. than, you know, I don't know, working at Costco the rest of your life. I mean, if you got to have a job too, it's fine. I had a job, you know, I had to do both. Um, and most people do. Most people, you know, you have to work a career or a job and start your business at the same time. But Absolutely. getting involved in that company changed my life and, it, and it's brought me that much closer to coaching mm. and more than anything what i got out of that was a good salesman is more beneficial than going to therapy <laughs> <And you're> like, <laughs> yeah. 
And, and you think like most people think salesmen are sleazy or, you know, they think a used car salesman or whatever. But, but, you know, I had the, the privilege of learning from a really incredible sales trainer, Jeremy Miner, and, and cause he was in that thing, you know, now it probably costs tens of thousands of dollars to work with him, you know? And, and it was like, I mean, I observed him and I just modeled him and I copied him and I was doing these sales calls with people and people would start crying. And, and, you know, I, I never really did that financially well in that company but I learned the skill of listening, which, which really is, is what it comes down to is just listening to people. You can hear when someone's listening to you, you know? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and so that, that was so impactful in my life and made such an impact because, I mean, who would have thought? I mean, I'm a really talkative, a vivacious kind of a Leo. You know, I always want people to look at me and talk about me and it's all about me. But it was like just being about the other people is, is such a service to give people. So, so that was like one of the, the very biggest first lessons in my, in my life was, was listening, the art of listening, the skill of listening. If you want to help people, if you want to be of service, start mm-hmm. listening to people because people are rarely listen to and you say what do you mean so true, David? So, yeah, true no, right? so true and i find sometimes i don't know if this is your experience but i find that you have to listen to what's not being said too absolutely absolutely it's an energy it's what you have to not do is be thinking in your head what you're going to say next mm. <laughs> that you have to truly be listening connected in their heart and you're absolutely right you're listening for what not being said that's absolutely right and, and so th- that was a huge step. So, so that business turned out to not work out that great. And it did get sketchy in the end. That's the one thing. They're like, but there's always something sketchy with network marketing. Well, you're kind of right. There is. There often, there often is. But it, it, it just depends on the people that run the company, own the company, whatever. Stuff happens. People change. In this case, one of the owners became a Scientologist and the other owner got in and all oh, whatever, you know, whatever. But so here I am now, I don't have the business. I broke my foot in five places. I gained 40 pounds. I unfortunately ended a really good relationship with an incredible woman. And I, and I moved to a new place where I didn't know anybody. And, and my life crashed. I crashed so hard. I ended up on the couch in the fetal position wanting to end my life. And I was in the fetal position for three weeks, debilitating depression. Hmm. Now, yeah, I just want to let you know that we lost your video. Yeah. For a moment. Um, hope yeah. We'll come back in a moment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I can just go on. That's it. I just wanted to, wanted to let you know, I guess you're seeing the same thing I am. I am. Sorry and, about and, that. Yeah, it's okay. And, and so, you know, what really made all the difference, right? I'm trying to break down three steps here, you know, th- three things. So it was, it was listening was, was, that was really the first thing. And, and, and then I, I was in such a deep, dark place. It was like, I had, I mean, I was so, you know, the dark night of the soul, you know, deep depression, hitting rock bottom. Mm. It's like, a, it's something to be grateful for. I mean, as crazy as that sounds, mm. it's so something to be grateful for because what, what it led me to was getting on my knees and surrendering my life to God. I'd always been spiritual. I'd been meditating already for 12 years. I had taken spiritual courses, had a spiritual teacher. I was, I was dedicated. I was devoted. But something happened after I broke my foot. It was like I forgot. I couldn't meditate because I couldn't, you know, I mean, it was bad. I couldn't even, um, mm. you know, get up to, to, to pee on my yes. own for, for two weeks after surgery. And, and so, and it was like, I totally went to sleep. I totally forgot who I was. I was playing a victim. I was all that. So one is take responsibility for yourself too. That's another thing. I had to take responsibility for myself, the situation I was in. And, and that led me to the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. I cannot do this alone. And I just, I gave it up. I surrendered my life to God. I got on my knees and I prayed and I asked for guidance and that day I, I meditated for two hours and, and I have not stopped meditating for two hours every day or, you know, or more since. Mm. And, and what that led me to was massage school. Now, I never thought I was going to be a massage therapist. I'll tell you that. That was mm-hmm. the last thing that I thought. Very therapeutic, that, I'm sure. That I'd probably do. But it was, and it was, oh my God, 
The Sada School is like one of the hardest years of my life. <laughs> I went through so much healing and it, and it really is. It's so beneficial. And, and during that time, you know, even though I never thought I'd be a massage therapist, it made sense a little bit. It didn't need to make sense to me. I was going to do it no matter what, mm -hmm. because that's what I was guided to do. That's where I, I was clearly led that. And that's where the listening comes in too. It's like praying to God is great. And it's even better when you can hear the response. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and so you have to listen to that too. You know, that's what like some people say prayer is like talking to God and meditation is listening. It's getting the answer. And so during that year, it, it, what it taught me was how to build relationships with people, ongoing, you know, professional relationships with, with people that paid me for my time. And, and it was within months of, of starting my own practice. I had a storefront where I gave massages and walk-ins could come into. So somebody came in that was just really distraught and, and some heavy stuff was going on in her life. And that's when I started becoming a coach. You know, that was my first client. I got paid $75 an hour and I thought I like <laughs> hit the big time. I was going to be rich and retired by now, you know? Um, I love the story because it's just, it shows that you can't just wake up one day and have everything in order. You know, there's like a process. So mm -hmm. you were, you know, you definitely had to learn one thing, feel it, move on to the next, move on to the next, like it is. And it's, I think it's great that people know that. So they know it's not instant. You do have to learn these things. You have to practice them in your own life before you can go, go ahead and um, teach it to other people as well. Right. sounds like you've come a long Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Yeah. Depression yeah. is tough. I mean, I've been there. I know, you know, it's different for everybody. So I don't know what it felt like for you, but it is tough. And I, I find that meditation is if you do it right. There's a, there's a, a way to do it right. I guess you would know better than I would. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very healing. Yeah. I like to say high quality meditation yes. because if you just sit there and be silent and, and I don't know, uh, you do what you do, it's still better than not doing it at all. So I'd like to say, yes, there's high quality meditation, which, which will make the biggest difference in your life. That's great. So you became a, a massage therapist and you were able to heal people. And it, it was like, I remember I had to go through, you know, it, there's so much about money too. And so many people, you know, want to avoid it, but it's, it's like be, being paid and stuff like that. So it was another thing. It was like, there was a part where I went, I went through a period of feeling guilty because I enjoyed what I was doing so much <laughs> and I was getting paid for it. And I had to be like, well, no, wait a minute. I decided, I made a decision. I wanted to do this and enjoy it and love it. And, uh, and, um, and, you know, so I had, I had to work through that. I had to work through that. And it's rare, right? People are yeah. like, oh, work if you like what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's like, well, no, this is absolutely what was my intention my whole life. You know, <laughs> my, my, my mother, God love her. Congratulations. And, That's huge. Yeah. I, I don't, I think she was such the best example for me because she never seemed super happy for me. Hap not for me, super happy with her work. I, I would say I would have a different opinion now. I would say she did enjoy what she did, but I didn't see it that way. And thank God, because it made me make the decision to not settle for anything less than enjoying what I do for. Absolutely. Wow. I know you talk about, there's something that, um, that you've created called Profits and Passion Playbook. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So what the coaching is really involved to, and, and, and this is kind of why I, I kind of fit in the, the network marketing and the direct sales, because because that's really where I got that passion and desire for it, because because I, because I just didn't want even, I mean, I bartended three nights a week. I was making 60 grand a year. I mean, this is like 15 years ago. I was an apartment resident manager. I lived on the beach. I paid like $400 a month in rent. I had a great life. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was awesome, you know, and, and starting this business, all it did was bring headaches and challenges and, and bring up fear. And it was like, why am I doing this? You know? And, but it was so worth it just to get out of that. I, I hated having to go to work at a certain time. I, I mean, and that's what people at work have to do, right? But I, I just hated that. I hated it. I you hated it. I hate. Huh. <laughs> you know what? what you, I hate? Hate? you know what I hate too is when you have to take orders from other adults on what time you have to take lunch and what time you have to do that. It's like I'm an adult too. Like, why do I need to? You know, oh my god, my life. 
absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'm like, I've got one bartending job. It was at Duke's in Malibu. It's, it's a coveted bartending job, you know? Right. And they're like, you got, you got to ask when you got to go to the bathroom. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm, what, what do you mean? I'm handling $3,000 in a night with all this liquor. You, I got to ask to go to the bathroom. No, I'm, I'm gone. But you know, it, it's don't settle for that stuff in life. It is absolutely don't, you know, it's, you're not, you know, it's not an egoic thing. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe, but it, I don't think it is. I don't think another adult should have to ask another adult, you know, whatever. I don't think another adult should tell me to wear a mask. I don't think another adult should tell me to do this or do that or do whatever. But anyways, what are we talking about, Nelia? <laughs> Profits and passion playbook. How's Profits that and passion. <laughs> so, so what the coaching has involved to after all these years, you know, I started as a meditation coach, a spiritual life coach. And, and really 10 years before that, I was training people and, and being a, a fitness coach. And, and what I found that is the thing that's my biggest passion, right? How am I going to teach passion for profits? If I'm not following my passion, it's helping people build business, create, create business from nothing, grow their business from where it at, take it from part-time to full-time, but to get out of the stranglehold of corporate America, the rat race, your career, your employment, because you're never really going to get free. You know, I mean, that's another thing they don't teach you in school. And there's a reason why, you know, yeah. if, you, if you go to college, <laughs> get a degree, you're literally enslaving yourself most likely into debt, you know, not everybody, but if, but if you're going to enslave yourself into debt, it's like, you'd be better off learning to be an electrician. Why do you want to go get a philosophy degree and be 80 grand in debt? You're literally be a so, career student. Yeah. Right. Right. So anyways, it, it's just, it was like breaking that mold, breaking that, get a good job, work 40 years, retire. It was like, no, you don't have to do that. And so it's, it's the passion for profits is it's, you know, it's a playbook and it's, it's 10 disruptive habits you need to break if you want to ditch the nine to five. And it, it's just, you know, you, you do have, not, every, not business isn't cut out for everybody. Not, not everybody's meant to be self-employed or an entrepreneur and that's fine. But if you have that inspiration in you, if you feel like you have a talent or a skill that you could use that you love to do and you would just love to make money from it, guess what? You can. It's possible. <laughs> it is possible. And so the Passion from Profits playbook, it isn't really about like do this and do that. Again, it's, it's like the, you know, the, 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 the non-entrepreneur asking the entrepreneur, <laughs> how do I do it? What do I do? And it's, it's, it's not like that. It's more of the mindset that you need. It's, it's more of the, the, the laying the foundational aspect for the person you need to become to become a business owner. Because you know, people get mad and they don't think business owners should make so much or it's not right that somebody makes that much. One, they took all the risk. And two, they're providing True. so many families with food on the table and a roof over their head. Why don't they deserve it? Do you know what it takes to be a, the difference between being the boss and being the employee? I mean, it's the person you yeah. need to become is significant. So, you know, it's and not, sorry, and not to feel guilty about that, you know? Do you no. find, yeah, do you find a lot of people that you coach um, have to get through their fear first? Like they all have an idea. It's just that confidence or that fear that's hold, like, what is holding most people back, you think? You know, the, you know, the self admittedly, the two most common things are fear and themselves. Mm. <laughs> and yes, it is always that thing. And, and you see, it's such a key part of my work is what I help people do is to release feelings because it's really all about the feelings. Okay. It's like, you know, how, so here, th this will be the third thing is you feel your way to success. Like people are like, I watched the secret and I thought about this and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and so it's okay. So first there's feelings that you'll maybe identify or label as bad. Really, there are no bad feelings. All feelings, they're just feelings. That's, that's all they are. But there's ones that are going to lead you towards your goals, and they're ones that are going to keep you from your goals. And so all fear is a fear of a feeling. And if, if, we, can, if we can release that feeling, not only do we release the feeling, but we release the 10,000 or so negative thought forms that go with it. So you're never going to be able to talk yourself into it. 
You know, you're never, you know, it's, it doesn't work that way. It's, it's like, even like therapy, if like therapy was super successful, well, I don't, I mean, we wouldn't have mental health crisis. <laughs> and I mean, I could throw a rock and hit a therapist in this town of 14,000 people I live in. That's how many there are. So mm. clearly it has some limitations. I'm not knocking it. it. You know, it's helpful. It was helpful to me at some point in my journey. But, but you, you need more than, than to talk it out. And, and you don't really need to rehash it either. Um, you just need to identify the feeling and learn how to release that feeling and let it go. So, so that's a real big key to my work. This is one of my first mentors said to me, he goes, when you write down your goal and you feel that, that funny feeling in your stomach or the tightness in your chest or maybe a closeness in your throat, that's what's stopping you from reaching your goal. Why? I mean, it took me over 10 years to figure out exactly what, how. I how... <laughs> and I love that you're so passionate about it because you can now teach what took you 10 years uh, a lot quicker for other people, right? People can, get it, people can get it in an hour. I mean, I, I, people, I've seen people change their life like that. I, you know, a woman once that she was in her 60s or 70s and she clearly, her mother was clearly severely abusive to her. I, I, don't, I don't need to know the details, so I don't ask, you know, mm -hmm. I, we just need to feel the feeling. And there was a room, um, it, was, it was kind of an older, an older woman group, you know, of, of like 10 people or whatever. And then one woman, you could tell she was getting mad at me. She was going to start yelling at me because I'm telling her to forgive her mom and to, and to let go of it. And, and it's, it's all right. And, and, and afterwards, when she, you know, she got done with the process, she looked like a whole new person. Her face went from like being kind of tight and squished up to like light and smiling. Everyone in the room saw it. Every, and she goes, well, I'm glad because I was going to yell at you. I couldn't believe what you were saying to her. You know, <laughs> so true. I'm, I'm a big advocate of not suppressing your feelings. Oh, yeah. no, that's that. That's it. That's I did what? that. I did that for 12 years when my father died and was diagnosed with all the things after that, you know, because it's just the raw, like, do not do that because you still end up with the same problem. You're just not talking about it or you're not expressing or facing it. Right. You're not facing it. It's humans will do just about anything to avoid feeling their feelings. So I'm saying like, just feel your feelings. Like it's so easy, but that's why we drink. That's, you know, why was I drunk yes. for four years straight to the point where I was peeing my bed every other night or something and blacking out, you know, why I was avoiding something, even like I was so fit. Right. Mm. And um, now don't get me wrong. I was a very happy guy, but I still had these on and off depression. Right. Mm -hmm. like, it was almost like, even though I put it into a healthy addiction, you might say, I still wasn't dealing with the, with whatever it was I needed to deal with. I still wasn't dealing with it. Right. I was finding a way to push it down and we'll do that with food, sex, shopping, shopping a lot bigger one than you think, you know, yeah. <laughs> gambling, anything. Yeah. Like if you find yourself perpetually going into debt, you know, that, that there's something there. There's, you know, there, there, it's more to it than, than, you know, what meets the eye per se. Yeah. And I really, you know, I really respect when people learn from their own experiences and then want to teach other people. I love that. Um, why keep it to yourself? You know, like, I mean, honestly, and I think, yeah, I mean, if you can even just with your story uh, to be able to do things that you love and, and make that a part of who you are and, and your job, let's say, call it a job. It can help with depression, with anxiety, with self-worth, with so many things. Um, it's so much more than work. And that's what I love about it. I love when people are teaching that. I'm so passionate about that subject. Um, you know, life is short. <laughs> I, you know, people say this all the time and I say this all the time. But, you know, um, when you're standing there and, you know, you know, someone's life is coming to an end, you start to really analyze what you're doing with your own. Um, and that's what happened to me. And through that, I decided, you know, I'm no longer going to just take up space. Like, you know, let's do something to help one another. Let's do something to, to make our lives better. So I really love this topic, honestly. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I can share a, a big win that I had this week yes. is that a client I've had for two and a half years, you know, and I remember when she first came into my, my office, you know, she was, her foot was shaking. She was scared. She didn't really know what I did. And, you know, I have, I, I, um, 
I, I, I don't really meet with people in person anymore, but, but I, I did for a long time because, because I liked it. And, um, and, um, ugh, so, okay. And so, but I'd have the group, I have group classes too. And like, she would get nervous speaking. Like it was like all these things. She's a completely new person now. And she, after two and a half years, she, this Wednesday was her last day at her career job for the last 13 oh, years. Amazing. Freedom. And, <laughs> yeah, and 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 you watch, you're gonna hear everybody Gobi gummies. We'll see. There's a little issue with the trademark, so I hope that ends up being the name. But <laughs> but she invented a gummy that, like, if you put it in bubbly water okay. or or champagne, it goes up and down. Oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a novelty, but I mean, it's so there's no gummy candy that exists like that in the world. People and, love that stuff. And, you know and, what I mean. Like, yeah, gummies is a billion dollar a year industry. Like it's it's you know it's a, it's big business, more than you'd ever think. You know, I've learned a lot about the sort of convection candy industry since. <laughs> but she's probably more relaxed, um, oh, even yeah. though she's probably more busy and learning all these things. It, it's different when you're enjoying what you're doing. I could be working an eighty hour week and love what I'm doing and feel like it's a twenty hour week, or you know. So there was, there was a quote that I, I read in my early 20s, and it said, you want to live your life in such a way where that if people are observing you, they, don't, they, they wouldn't know if you're working or playing. Mm, I so love that. Me I too. I haven't heard that before. Yeah, so that's my ideal. That's what I strive for is, is, is that, you know, and, and I think okay. I do a pretty good job at it. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. I understand that... Um, you are very graciously giving our guests a free gift, the 21 day meditation journey. I yeah. Love, I love yeah they, well, well, they can get the passion from profits playbook as well. Okay. And, great. And, and, and so meditation is really what has changed my life. And mm. it, more than anything, it, it like pr pretty much any, any scripture you read in, in uh, ancient spiritual texts, it's, you know, what is it? It's know thyself. It's know thyself. And what is it? B Buddha says, all of suffering comes from not knowing who you are and, and attachments to your results, basically. I, I'm using my own words, but it, it's like that's something that you learn in yoga, meditation, spirituality. Your job is to do the work as if you're doing it for God, as if you're doing it for Jesus, as if you're doing it for Buddha, as if you're doing it for Allah. You do it with 100% integrity, all that you have to do it. But the result has nothing to do with you. You have to let go of attachment to the result and you have to come to know who you are. You know, so many people look at, look at what's happening in the world right now with, you know, every, you know, with the white supremacy and the, you know, you're not black, you're not white, you're not Hispanic, you're not green and you're not purple. You know, you are the love. There's one thing and that thing is love. And that's what we all are. And how we show up in our body is just a different expression of consciousness, but we're all the consciousness the, the, you know, the, it, it's like, would you be prejudiced against someone for driving a Ford versus a, a well, people are like that, but, but that, but that, but that's silly, right? That's it's, yeah. it's just the vehicle. It's, it's like, nobody would seriously get angry about that. And, and so I'm, I'm not saying there's not injustices in the world, but what I'm saying, those injustices come from ignorance and the ignorance is not knowing what we are. You know, we, we are all one thing. We are all the love and the light. And like, you know, yoga says, you know, namaste, the light in me recognizes the light in you. So you can just see past the labels. You're not the labels. That's the mental construct. That's the social construct, right? Mm -hmm. Is the labels that you give yourself. We, we are all the same thing. We are all the love and we all the light. And, and we're here to get to know ourselves. And we get to know ourselves, you know, best by conquering our fears. And the way that we conquer our fears is by doing what scares us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to do the work. It's true. It's true. Work. I just read a quote. The, I'm getting ready to release my book in a couple of weeks. And I just read a quote, you know, all the things you're afraid to write about, write that. And I'm it's sort that. of like similar to what you're saying, you know, I just have a question because I do, you know, a lot of people who are listening do meditate, but there are some that um, are kind of on the fence. They don't know where to start. So I know when I began, um, it, it took me a little while to really understand what I was doing. So what I don't know. What do you find is the something that perhaps you can tell us or a tip on when you're first starting? Um, is there one thing to kind of keep in mind if you're finding it a little bit difficult? Because it is a skill as well, right? 
Yeah, sure. Well, l- let me say this. The 21-day meditation journey actually has 21 guided meditations in it. Perfect. So that's a great place to start. The, the next greatest place to start is, is you're going to have an exponent exponential better chances of, of having success and enjoyment from meditation sooner than later if, you, if you're part of some sort of group. So like I host three to four meditation classes a week, um, but I, I do charge money because there's a coaching aspect in it. It's a very- As novel, you should, absolutely. As I should, but there are groups out there that don't even, you know, there, there's, there's places that you can sit for free. You don't have to pay, but, but don't think there's anything wrong with it. The, you know, the- the, the, the people that work at churches get a salary because you got to support yourself if, if you're giving this way. So anyways, um, but, but, to, but to give you one point of advice, you know, so true meditation is, is it's a state of being. You, you actually are not doing anything when you meditate. You want to be. But it, it, traditionally, it takes um, an advanced spiritual student or an enlightened master to really get the student into a state of meditation, at least prolonged. So you could say that meditation, if you've ever experienced it, where you're just, you know, there's no space and time, your body's not there, there's your, your mind's completely silent and you're gone, you know, that that's, you know, touching on that space of meditation. But what we're doing to get to meditation is practicing single point of focus, right? Concentration. That's in some ways, that's a definition of, of med- is concentration. So a- every scripture talks about the, the, this, right? Jesus says, when the eye is, sin- the eye is single, I got to learn this, this uh, thing that he says, because I don't know it. But when thy eye is single, you'll see the light, something like that. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, it's just, it's, you know, focus on the point between your eyebrows. It's, it's just, it's over and over again in scripture. This is the point right here. And so it's just like, you close your eyes and if it's comfortable, you can lift your gaze. Now, for some people, it's on, it took me years and years before I could lift my gaze, but I would just focus on that point. And now it's just no problem. And so what that does is, you know, where you're, Focus goes, energy goes, energy goes, focus goes, however that is. So, so you're developing this part of your brain, the, the prefrontal cortex that's least developed, right? You're putting your attention on that uh, pituitary, is that penino, penino gland. And, and what it's doing is helping you slow down your brain waves. So, you know, there's beta, alpha, theta, delta. And, um, geez, you ever do Toastmasters? I just catch myself saying, um, and I think of the people in Toastmasters. <laughs> They're giving me a check for that. <laughs> anyway, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> Anyways, so the beta state is 14 to 40 cycles per second. If, if, if your brain cycles go too high, you'll have a stroke. Our world and society is designed to keep you in that beta state, that fight or flight, always going. Where we want to live is that low mm. alpha high theta state. And so by putting your attention here, it's literally going to help you slow your brain waves. You're literally going to start releasing hormones and peptides that will literally just help you relax and put you into that relax, recover state. And, you know, it might take 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, it might take a while in the beginning. You know, you probably don't want to hear that because you only want to meditate 15 minutes. (laughs) But, it took me but, a, few, a few tries, to be honest, to get it, you know, because I would judge myself as I was doing it. This isn't where, and, and that's so not what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So it took me 12 years. So, yeah. but, you know, yeah, th- that is the thing. People, they tell themselves they can't meditate or it doesn't work for them. And it's like, yeah, so don't do that. Right. <laughs> don't tell yourself you're doing it wrong. Don't judge yourself. You, you just start. You know, when I started, I didn't know anything about anything. I just... I set the alarm on the microwave and I, and I watched my breath for five minutes, you know, to be honest with you, I fell out, I passed out for an hour, you know, I didn't even, you yeah. know, I, I you um, can't do it wrong. <laughs> no, I paid for a group and it was the best money I've ever spent. And I was, I was new to this and you would lie down. And as they were doing the guided meditations, um, some would, would come around me. I'd have my eyes closed and I'd be lying down. Um, But somebody would come around me with these beautiful ancient instruments and sound is a huge thing for me when I meditate. Mm -hmm. Um, And the sounds like I could just feel them vibrate, you know, there were these old, like gong type things and, and I was like, okay, this feels weird. But then when I got into it, it was like the best, most calming moment that I have ever had. And I remember having 
you know, you kind of feel tired and sleepy because you're so relaxed, but when you're done, you have more energy than you have, you know, it's like you're preserving all your energy and reserving it all for the right things. It's so great. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I have to say this, it's, it's like, you know, the two rules that I have with meditation is be comfortable and sit up straight. Oh, okay. So so you, you want to think of, you know, your, your spinal cord or like this is, is like an antenna. And it's like when you're lying, you know, think of like when you got a radio and the antenna's up, you can hear the station, it's clear and it's good. But when you're laying down, when you lay the antenna down, it's like, oh, okay. You you don't get a good signal. So it's okay to lay down and all that. And it's like, you know, I have had people be like, oh, you can meditate laying down. It's like, okay, no ancient scripture has the posture of laying down, you know, dead man's pose after you do your yoga, think, it's fine. I think but, it was just cause it was a sound one and we were experimenting. Yeah, it was sound that, healing. Yeah. It was, yeah. I get it. I have that. When I have retreats, I always have that and people lay down and they get it. And there's a guided healing meditation where we lay down and, and if that's where you want to start, that's fine. But I, I just, I have to, the teacher in me Thank has you. to let people know. <laughs> I appreciate that, it that yeah 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 you want to i mean it's it's even to get into the esoteric of it you know well we won't do that but yeah that's cool and i really enjoy the tapping too i thought this is kind of weird but everything is like that you know anything new it could be a little strange you know give it a chance um take away all those thoughts that you have of uncertainty and try it because you're going to be hooked for sure the, the most successful people in the world, the most successful businessman, the most successful athlete, if you told them to stand against the wall on one hand and eat a jelly bean and it's going to make you more successful, they're going to try it. Now, if they don't get the result, they're, they're going to stop, but they'll do anything if it's going to give them an edge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was going to say something to you. <laughs> completely forgot. I was so involved in what you were saying. So I usually ask my guests, um, I think I know the answer for your your question, but I usually ask uh, most of the people that come on, what is the best gift that you ever gave yourself um, that made you think differently about yourself or changed your life? And I can tell for you that that is meditation. I mean, yeah. you know. yes. So People ask, what do you get from meditation? Mm. And the reality is, it's not what you get, it's what you let go of. So it was like, I let go of guilt. I let go of shame. I was able to forgive myself and love myself. And, and so, yes, that, that is the, definitely the greatest gift I've ever gave myself. And, and, and if I had to say it else, it's also hiring coaches and teachers and people and and you know, that, that's been the other thing is always having a, a, a teacher, a mentor or a coach. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, we all have that in our lives where we have shame and guilt and regret. And it's tough. It's tough living with those things. Of course, they're going to cause us depression and feelings of self-worth. And just like you were saying, the stories that we tell ourselves. So if you guys are just, you know, feeling any of this, I think most of us go through this in our life and you haven't tried meditation, then honestly, I think you should take advantage of what David's offering here. I think you should definitely, I know that I'm going to have a look at this right away when we get off, because I'm interested in learning more about the topic, especially since it sounds like I've been doing it wrong with the lying (laughs) down, you know? (laughs) It's it's not wrong. It's not wrong. And it it, it makes you feel good and all that. And you had the most relaxed moment you ever had. So it's great. It's great. And to progress... You, you want to, for, you know, to really progress in the high quality meditation, you want to progress to, to a sitting posture. Yeah, no, I love that. Thank you. Is there anything, you know, that we didn't get a chance to talk about today that you'd like to share with us? Jeez, I don't know. We sure did talk <laughs> about, uh, I don't know. I was, it was like, I've, it, you know, I've been doing a lot of podcasts lately, so I don't want them just to all be the exact same, but it was like, <laughs> I'm a little... You know, because I went all over the place, I feel like. But, but, you know, what I would like to say is that, you know, like I said, the 21-day meditation journey, you know, you can hear more about my story. It's got the meditations. The the Passions from Profits playbook is, I recommend it. And and even more than that, or, or I should say with that, I recommend, you know, if you do have a talent or gift you want to share with the world, if you do have some inner inspiration, if it's been gnawing at you to start a business, 
to schedule the, the profits from passion coaching session with me. You know, I'm offering you a free session for watching uh, Nelia's podcast. That's great. Thank you and, so much. I love that. Yeah. And during this session, I'm going to help you get really clear on what you want to create. Like most people, they, you know, this is something I want to bring up. Most people, they stop at the money. It's like, I want to do this thing. Can't do it. Don't have the money. For, you have to let go of that. You know, it's, it's like nobody has, you know, your, your greatest source of capital is your imagination. Not yes. Yes. What's Thank in you. your bank account. And, Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. So if it's in there, if it's in there, it keeps coming up. You have what it takes. You, you've been given what you need to fulfill that. You, you just might need some help. And so I'm going to help you get really clear on those things. And during the session, I'm going to help you uncover what's getting in the way so you can move forward, feel inspired and, and get on with it. No, I love it because, you know, having the idea doesn't cost anything. Start with an idea and then we all need somebody to coach us, you know, like, yeah, check out David, connect with him. He sounds um, like he's, he knows what he's talking about. I mean, if it's helped him in his personal journey right there, you know, it can help you as well. And that's why I love it when people um, teach what they learn for themselves. Cause I mean, we all want to feel a certain way and you, David, if you have done the work and, and it's helped you, you know, it's going to help other people. So I love that. And, you know, for me, it's like this whole topic about, turning what you what you love uh your passions into work i love that because not only are you going to help other people that's obvious but you help yourself as well like you were talking about it's a two-way street i think both parties really win um i know for me it helps like when i help with other people it helps me feel better about who i am it helps me debunk things that you know make me help me get my own identity It's so many things that it does for me. And then on the upside, it helps the people that I'm working with. So honestly, everybody wins. And I think this is becoming more and more popular, you know, as, uh, as I'm getting older, we didn't really talk about this stuff when I was younger, but um, I love that people are opening up their minds to these new things because there is and can be money and profit in it. Like you said, and there could be, you know, all the love that goes along with it. You can love being alive and you can enjoy making money sometimes. <laughs> like it yeah. doesn't have to be like this heavy thing, right? So yeah, I love it. it's not even about the money. So I, I'll just, I'll kind of end on this because it, it is something I want to say is, there, you know, do-gooderism has really become almost like a plague on our planet. Mm. You know, every people want to save people. People want, you know even even helping people even though i say that I, it's it's you know it's borderline it, it it's like it, you are part of the world if you want to change the world heal yourself change yes. yourself and in that process the world changes and becomes better i love that thank you so much for your your brilliance mm. i appreciate it so much i'm so glad that we got a chance to meet and chat today and I'm excited because I really do think that the listeners are going to gonna gain a lot from this episode. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Nelia. I really appreciate it. Being and I here. know that uh, <laughs> I know that you have a Facebook group as well, if people want to join or how can they connect with you? Yeah. You know, I think I just changed the name to that Facebook group, but I just started <laughs> another one. So I don't know, but you know, you can just Google, just search David Sandercott and Facebook and connect with me and say hi, or you can, like I said, if you get those books, you'll, you'll get in my email list. Perfect. You know, I'll send you an email and, uh, but just, just find me, you know, I, I wish it was a little easier, but there'll be website links or something. You yeah. Know, you'll be able to find I'll me. Put all the show notes. I'll put all the links in the show notes and people can contact me as well. If for some reason they can't find you, but I Googled you and you're out there and it was easy enough. So we're good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. Facebook's the main way I communicate with people. I mean, it just, you know, Thank you. And keep doing what you're doing. You know, it sounds like you're thriving and you're really, um, you're really on the path to what you love to do and, and you're doing it every day. And I respect that. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me and make it a great, great weekend. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe or leave a review. See you next week on the Giving Starts With You podcast.